Hey you guys, welcome to Localite, John Compton here, and with me in the studio today is Jake French. And you may have already uh, heard Jake's story to some extent, uh, there's definitely been some media coverage of him, but he's a local guy here who has really um, just had a huge change in his life and he's using that change for positive and doing positive things with it and inspiring others and so he's graciously taken time out of his very busy schedule to sit down with me and uh, hopefully inspire not only uh, me but you guys and so it's really a pleasure to have Jake French. So Jake thanks for coming on. Hi John thank you so much for having me. Yeah well let's let's just go back to when this all happened. It was December 5th of 2008 yes. and it was really, I mean, a very uncommon, I mean, you weren't in a car wreck, you know, it was, it was really sort of a buddy, you know, normal day-to-day -day kind of a thing almost that, that this happened. And tell me about that, tell us about that. Well, December 5th, 2008, I was on top of the world. I'd recently graduated from the University of Idaho, got my degree in forest products, and had just started my first permanent job for the Tillamook, um, Oregon Department of Forestry and it was awesome. Three weeks into that job, I went out with a roommate. We were celebrating his birthday, and on our way home, we stopped at a gas station. It was there that I ran into an old childhood friend of mine, one that I hadn't seen in many years, and I just quickly said, hi, you know, how, how's it going? We hadn't, like I said, we hadn't seen each other in many years, so we were very excited, and just a few minutes went by, I turned my back, and he made a bad decision. He decided to put me in a full Nelson headlock, so, before I knew it, and my arms were pinned back behind my head like this, and we weren't wrestling, we weren't fighting. I, I don't know why he did it, but he did, and we'd both been out partying that night, so we stumbled and we fell. With my arms pinned back behind my head, the first thing to hit the pavement was my head. I can still hear the sound, and that moment changed my life in so many ways. It, it broke my neck at the sixth vertebrae, leaving me a quadriplegic. Wow. Yeah. And since then, you know, I remember the first couple of days in the hospital as I'm laying there looking up at the hospital lights in the neck braces. <laughs> now, I couldn't move anything. I, I couldn't move my arms. I could basically just move my head a little bit. Uh, my mom came over to me one day, and I could see that she'd been crying. There's tears coming down her face. And I, as I'm looking up, I said, Mom, just chill. <laughs> You know, it is what it is. Uh, and as you can imagine, she's pretty shocked. You know, she's looking yeah. down at me saying, what, this, is, this crazy spinal cord injury has happened to you. You know, what are you doing with this attitude? But that was a, a key moment in my recovery and the rest of my life. Because that, right then, I set the tone in the room. And I couldn't move my hand. But I had the power to change the atmosphere in the entire room with just my attitude. Mm -hmm. And so that really set the tone for my recovery the rest of my life. And that's what we've been doing. We just said, okay, you know, this is terrible. It happened, but we're going to move on. Mm -hmm. And since then, I've done a lot of physical therapy. As you can see, I can move my arms now. Right. And it's great. I, I still am paralyzed. I'm, I'm still a quadriplegic. I don't have any feeling from the collarbone down. And I have about half use of my arms. I can feel on the tops and these two fingers on both hands. But it's, it's slowly coming back. Uh, it, I have like I said, an awesome physical therapist in the hospital up in Seattle, here in the Gorge. And then also I go to a place called Adapt Advance in Beaverton, Oregon. That's a phenomenal facility. It takes guys like me that have had either a spinal cord injury or a, something else that's interfered with the nervous system. And they say, get out of that wheelchair. You know, we're going to make you go up, get up and walk one day or at least improve your quality of life. And, and that's, it gives guys like me hope. Yeah. Because when I, when I came out of the hospital, I was just prepared to live the rest of my life in the wheelchair. And who knows, that may happen. Mm -hmm. But since I've been going to Adapt Advance, I've gotten a lot of function back. I've gotten a lot of core strength. Uh, I can sit up more, a lot of arm strength. I can feel more sensation in my legs. And I, it's, it's all part of the process of winning up here, because uh -huh. that's half the battle. Well, I mean, just in the short time that I've known you, mm -hmm. and then obviously reading some of your story and being briefed about you, um, you know, just a really upbeat, positive guy, great, great attitude, great sense of humor. <laughs> um, was that was that you before the accident? It was. Okay. I have to thank my parents. Yeah, I have amazing parents, and they 
they helped me through this, and my, my brother is just phenomenal, my group of friends. Um, and about six, seven months ago, I thought, hey, you know, I've overcome this, I'm overcoming the situation, I'll be doing that my whole life. I hope I can help other people. So I decided, let's go into inspirational speaking, let's do this. And I, I've done that, it's, I've come out with the message of life happens, live it. Yeah, yeah, and that's actually the title of a book that you're writing right it now, is. right? Yes, yes, it's going to be 12 chapters of people who have been in similar circumstances that I have, where they've encountered a life-changing injury or a difficult situation, and they're coming out on top. They embody my message of life happens, live it. And the most important thing I've discovered is that attitude is everything. Yeah. I mean everything. And also that everyone has a wonderful gift, and that's the gift of choice. We can't always control what happens to us, but we can control how we react to it. That's something I'm a very firm believer in, and you know that's how I'm living my life. Mm -hmm. Just, okay, this has happened, let's go get them. How, because what you say, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's obviously, um, it's, it's inspirational, you know, but what about when you look at people who maybe have fully functioning or, or full use, you know, of their limbs and, um, and the ability to essentially, well, you know, go out and do anything that they want and, you know, they choose to end their life or yeah. things like that. What, what, where do you think that comes from? I mean, how does that affect somebody like you who's striving and making these changes and saying, you know, I've had some, you know, tough stuff put on me, but it's not gonna, it's not gonna defeat me. You know what, John? I think the worst physical, dis the worst disability of all is a negative attitude. It's 10 times worse than what I have because it's a disability that you place on yourself. I, mean, there's, I may be paralyzed from the neck down. I don't think there's any reason to paralyze myself from the neck up, and you do that with a negative attitude. And it's tough, I, I'll admit, I, w I had a hard time coming out of the hospital because all these things were pouring into my head about what I'd never be able to do again. I, I'm a big outdoorsman, I love to hunt and fish, ride motorcycles, and I'm thinking to myself, Oh, I'm in a wheelchair. There's, there's no way I can go and hunt the same spots or fish the same rivers or ride motorcycles again. But it, it was a big shift in thinking that, that came about and just that, you know what, it may not be the exact same as it used to be. Mm -hmm. But I'm still going to go out there and do it. And I get just as much joy now from sitting on the Deschutes River on the little, they have a, a handicap accessible dock on Blue Hole. And it's not standing in the middle of the river fly fishing, but I'm out there, I'm having fun because I choose to look at it that way. And like I said earlier, everything is a choice. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I, I don't know if I'll ever get back to some of the things that I used to do, but I'm happy now. Yeah. I'm just as happy as I was before, if not more, because I've had everything taken away from me. So now I realize that, you know, every day I have left is just, is something I should make the most out of be so thankful that I have and I'm it's too bad this injury happened to me but in a way if you want to look at it this way I'm almost lucky that it happened you know this early in life you know, I'm only 25 it's 23 when it happened because now that I've had this realization about life about how important it is to have a positive attitude I got a whole life ahead of me yeah with this attitude yeah absolutely so it's it's gonna be wonderful I can't wait to see what the future brings yeah well I'm I'm looking forward to seeing you know what you do, and I just want to continue this conversation um, just on your day-to-day -day stuff. What's your day-to-day -day life and everything when we come back from the break? So, you guys, Jake French is on the show, and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.